uh, and we'll get started with our session. So like I said, um, welcome to the session. Today we're looking at getting started with podcasting. Um, just really going to be talking around how children in the classroom and adults can use this as different ways to develop um, reflection on what they're doing. So um, hopefully this is going to be of use to you. As always, please do use the chat window um, if there's any questions you've got um, or raise your hand and, and you can come off mute and feel free to just ask questions throughout the session. Um, in this session, we're going to be using GarageBand. Um, no surprises, it's part of our Apple Teacher um, kind of a set of, of RTC sessions that we're doing really to get people to not only see the power of the tools, but also to think about um, developing your own uh, skill set in terms of the Apple suite of applications. And obviously, today we will be looking at Keynote. Um, so here's our, our agenda. Um, we're going to be just taking a look at what GarageBand looks like. So people, if you've not used it before, can just be a little bit more familiar with it, exploring some of the, the tools that are in there, um, and then really thinking about how that can help you develop your podcasts um, and definitely thinking about getting creative. That's at the core of everything that we like to do. Um, I've shared this before, but I will share this again. If you're watching, I'm going to put this into uh, the chat window. This uh, is just a guide that I created to really supplement um, what you're doing in terms of Apple Teacher and taking it further. Um, there's some ideas in there, some other applications of not only GarageBand, but also um, the other skills that are within Apple Teacher. And then there's a, a book that you can use either yourself or use it with, with other staff members or even with students to think about how they would apply those skills in the classroom. Um, it's there in English. It's also there um, in Welsh for my Welsh colleagues and students as well. Um, so feel free to, to grab hold of that and see how you might use that in your own teaching. Now, as always, I suppose this is because of the, the lecturer in me, um, I like to sort of add in something around research to do with this. Um, when kind of putting together this session, I, I really wanted to think about the, the impact that podcasting can have in the literacy classroom. And I'll introduce him properly in a second, but one of um, our graduate students from University of South Wales is actually joining me today. Um, and he's done his own research into this, did an action research project, which I'm sure he'll, he'll share some thoughts on um, in a moment. Um, this research though, just talks about the impact specifically of using podcasting in the literacy classroom. I've just put a link to this in the chat window as well. So you can see this for yourselves. Um, but there's some really interesting things in this. Um, on the page that you can see at the moment, although it's quite small, um, it's just taken directly from the outcomes of this. There's just some of those key things about what podcasting can do. So uh, from the very top, podcasting provides that flexibility, uh, way for students to be able to access and distribute learning, um, all the way down to podcasting being collaborative learning experience. Um, students feel that sense of community. I think there's all things there that, that we probably look to do as educators in the classroom and podcasting kind of naturally allows that, um, certainly within a literacy sense, because so much planning has to go into place to create anything. This bit um, I've taken directly uh, from the research. Uh, I've just highlighted the three things there that, that podcasting can, can massively support um, around this idea of, of global literacy, our place in the world, um, digital literacy, obviously, that we look at, and then this idea of, of visual literacy as well, being able to represent things. How can we, using just our voice, using just our words, be able to build a picture? How do we interpret um, terminology to build something so it becomes more than just the words on a page? So again, it's not a lecture, so I won't, I won't dwell on this, but I always think it's useful to, to embed the things that we talk about in research. So at this point, I'll, I'll hand this um, over to Scott. So hopefully Scott's got, got uh, his microphone off and can, can join with us. Scott is a, a graduate, I think it was 2019. Scott, am I right? You finished? You are spot on, Matt, yes. Good, I have good memory. Um, <laughs> he's now a, a digital lead at Blenheim Road Primary in Cambran, um, leading on some fantastic things. Um, and I asked him along today really because when he was with us a few years ago, he actually did an action research project around podcasting, and I know he's done a lot around podcasting going forward. So, Scott, I don't know if you just wanted to share just for a few minutes to, with the audience what your experience of podcasting is. Yeah, sure. Thank you, Matt. Um, good evening, everyone. I absolutely, as Matt's already said, I graduated from University of South Wales um, almost two years ago now. 
And in my final year of um, the course that I was doing, my action research was very heavily focused around podcasting. And it was purely from a point of view of, um, I felt it was a tool that was really underutilized in schools. And I think it's something that has a huge amount of potential. So I looked specifically at that point at the links between podcasting and confidence in our learners. And the reason for that was predominantly that the learners I was um, I was sort of studying were very, very poor when it came to confidence in speaking to their peers. So if they were asked, for example, to answer a question in class, they, they were really, really nervous about doing it. And podcasting was something that I felt might give them a voice without a live audience. And my research was purely focused around if we use podcasting in that way, will it improve confidence? And uh, the long answer I could talk about for days and days and days. The short answer is yes, it does. Um, taking away that pressure of a live audience made a huge amount of difference to them. You know, a lot of them were saying things like, now that I've recorded a podcast and I've spoken in front of all these people, I might as well do it in person now because they know what my voice sounds like. Or things along the lines of, um, sometimes I don't know what to say, but because I was recording a podcast, I could think about what I was going to say before I said it. And, you know, they, they made a huge difference and a long lasting difference. So to, to cut a long story short, I took that forward into my teaching practice. And as Matt said, um, I now teach at Blenheim Road Primary in Cumbran in South Wales. We've set up our own school podcast. Um, which is obviously not quite the same as action research, um, but we produce a podcast every half term. So every six or seven weeks. Um, and essentially the podcast is run by the children for the children. Um, so they host it. You won't hear my voice on there. They decide what they want to talk about. They decide the interview. They decide every detail of it. And my role. Well, I'm in this game play. They are purely there to um, support, to, to guide, to help edit, and really just to, to pave the way. But the children own it, and that's really, really important. So we use that as a tool for communicating with our families and those outside of the school. We use it as a way to um, highlight the great work that the children are doing. But more than anything else, it gives the children real ownership over um what it is that they want to say. And I think that is so important in learners these days is, is that they get a platform that's theirs. You know, we're not telling them what to say. We're not sort of filtering what they say. It is truly their podcast. The, the links I'm sure Matt's going to pull out, I won't go into too much detail on, but the links with literacy are huge. And what we hope to do in the future, having now introduced podcasting, is to really fully integrate it into our curriculum so that it becomes a tool um, that's for reflection and for learners to record their learning just as much as it is a tool to use across the school in the way I've just described. So, you know, the, the I suppose the point here, Matt, I won't tread too much on your toes because I'm sure this is going to tally quite nicely with where you're going with it, but the links with literacy we found just in the last sort of year and a half are absolutely huge and there is a real benefit to focusing on oracy on speaking before you try and focus on writing and and it takes me back Matt to something you always said which has really stuck with me which is if we're not measuring and assessing their ability to write why are we forcing children to write you know if they can say it why don't we just allow them to say it because that actually might be the best way for them to communicate uh, at that time so um that's really important to us and that is something that is you know really front and center of our thinking as we sort of move forward to the new curriculum in wales but i think that should be integrated into everybody's practice and that's something i'm you know really really passionate about so i i'll i'll certainly jump back in matt later on but as i say I, i'm careful not to tread on your toes no, 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 that's fine um and and thanks for sharing that one it's quite nice to know that i actually said something which which people paid attention to in uni uh, <laughs> that's always a positive um but just just i, I really wanted you to share one 
um, your experiences of doing this in the classroom, because I think that's always important to people, because because I think there's a lot of people that think that podcasting is something they'd like to do, but how do I put it in so that it becomes relevant in a classroom and isn't just something fun? And I think you, you've alluded to that. And also, really, for, for the student teachers that are on the call with us um, this afternoon, for them to see that the impact they can have as trainee teachers start in their profession and, and you're you know you embody that massively from from the time you you tried these things as a trainee teacher as part of action research but you've taken it into your career and lead on it in school so i think again that's kind of the, the message i wanted to get across so uh, scott if you've got anything you want to share in the chat window please do uh, any links to to any of your research any links to any of your your students podcasts if they're public i think that would be great for people to see examples of the things that you do yeah absolutely i will do and throughout the session, jump in if there's if there's anything to kind of add in from a, a, a teaching point of view in terms of how how you did a lot of these things. So um, we're going to get started then. Um, hopefully you've got an iPad with you. Hopefully you've got GarageBand on your iPad and we're going to have a bit of a play um, and, and just have a look at how we can do these things. So we're going to explore the different tools, how to start. Um, there's a couple of, of just quick tips when you're creating anything in GarageBand um, to know that you know you won't get hung up before you, you start creating something. Um, we're going to start with recording some audio, but before we even record that, we're going to need a plan. What are we going to say? Um, and so I'm going to just show you kind of a tip where you can use uh, pages as a bit of a teleprompter. If you didn't know that, we'll, we'll show you how that can work. Um, we'll take a look at Apple Loops. So again, you might not be musical, but how you can use something like Apple Loops to just add maybe a jingle to, to the, the podcast to bring it to life. Um, audio samplers for, for gathering um, other sounds, other conversation, other interviews with other people. Um, how to just quickly edit your work. And then what else there is in GarageBand, really? Whilst we're in the app, let's have a look at some of those other things. So live loops um, and then the, the instruments as well. And then the final thing, how do we share it? How do we get this out? And again, Scott, you might want to jump back in there at that point to talk to people about how you've gone through that process in your classroom. So before we take the test, let's jump into uh, pages. So I'm going to start in pages. And I'm starting in pages, really, because I just want to highlight something, which is, I suppose, what, what Scott was alluding to there in terms of the, the support for literacy. So as I was putting this session together, I was thinking, well, um, I'm talking about students developing their literacy skills with podcasting. If I just turn a microphone on, what usually happens is students will panic and they'll, they'll they might stutter and then they'll worry about how it comes across and you know are they saying the right thing. So actually, a script is good, but then I might be starting with writing, and actually that's almost the opposite of what Scott's just said. Then in terms of you know we don't want to maybe start with writing all the time. So actually, something that's great within um, within pages is if I just show my virtual keyboard here, having the dictation tool here, is I can actually marry those two things together. I do want a script because it's going to help me with my uh, speed of delivery, etc. But maybe I don't want to write all of that down in the first place. So if I tap on the record button here, so the dictation tool, welcome to today's podcast. In this session, we're going to be talking all about how to get started with podcasting, full stop, new line. Today, we're joined by Scott, who's going to be giving us some interesting insights into what he does in his classroom, full stop. So I can practice my podcasting. I can practice how this comes across. I can think about my punctuation, my delivery, my style. And now I also now have this um, documented on my screen as a script to read back. Now, if I just take this first bit at the top, this was the practice one I did earlier. If I tap on the three dots along the top here, and scroll down, you'll see that I get the option to choose presenter mode. And if I turn on presenter mode, this now creates this as a teleprompter. So as I'm now reading this back, it will actually go through at a speed which helps me share my, my thoughts to the audience with this comfort um, base of having the text on the screen. If I just tap on the screen, you'll see it will slowly start to scroll up just as a, a teleprompter does. Um, and it helps me with my pace, helps me with the, the words. I can change the size of the font. So I can make that bigger if I need to make it bigger or smaller. Accessibility wise, as, as all Apple products do, um, allow me to think about how I want to see that on the screen, even down to the, the font style um, and the speed that, that might scroll through at. So it's just really a bit of a tip to, to help your students in just developing that confidence to know what they're gonna say 
But without it being a writing task in the first place, always remember that using the dictation tool, you can kind of practice those script writing uh, abilities, but not have to type those things down. So just wanted to kind of start with that bit. And again, as always, please do, if there's any questions, fire them into the chat window. So let's jump into GarageBand itself. If you've never seen GarageBand before, it looks very similar to all of the other Apple um, apps. This is my library. Um, you'll notice here that I'm not great at naming conventions. There's lots of my song one, my song two, my song three. Not as bad as my keynote ones that say presentation 222. Um, but you can name these as well, which is always good. Um, I'm gonna start at the top though with a new deck. And so I'm gonna start on the plus icon here. If you want to jump straight into just podcasting though, it's very useful to know that you can just tap this and it will take you straight to that voice recording, which is where we're going to ultimately end up. But I'll show you how to get into this um, the other way as well. If I tap on plus, it will take me into all of the instruments. So just again, just to highlight what GarageBand can offer you. Lots of different instruments that you can play through, as well as those live loops that we'll explore a little bit later. But again, we're going to start just within the audio recorder for this session, which is here and I'm going to choose just the voice audio record. And you'll see it's going to end up in that same place I was in before, which is just the sound mixing panel. Now you'll see on the left hand side, this is um, highlighting my, my voice level. So in terms of how, um, how much, uh, how loud I'm speaking, etc. So you can adjust that. You have the same on the out if you did have an output device, which I, I don't at the moment. And then you can change the pitch and tone and all of these things that you can play around with, whether you want to have um, different effects on your voice, not full on effects, I'll show those in a second, but just whether or not you want it to sound high pitched or low pitched and, and whether you're in a hall and so there's echo on it, etc. Now, one key thing here to highlight is when you're creating your podcast, um, this is set at the moment to have an eight beat. Um, so when I get to the end of here, it will start again and I'll end up actually recording over myself. So one quick tip, always turn this on, is tap the plus icon next to the eight. So along the bar here, you've got the plus icon. And where it says section A, eight bars, I'm gonna change this to automatic. And now it doesn't stop at the end. It won't start recording over itself. It just allows you to continuously record your voice. So that's just a really, really useful tip. And the next thing to highlight here is you also have these fun categories. So when you are working, if you want to have a podcast, um, and, and this is a great example from, from actually the Everyone Can Create Guides, um, have, a, have an interview with an alien, um, you can actually do a podcast on your own, but you can be two different characters. So you can record the first line of, of you asking the questions in this clean um, environment, and then you can change the voice to sound like a monster or a robot or um, that you're in this dreamland. Um, or you're a squirrel, so you've got this really high-pitched voice, et cetera, um, or an alien. Um, and it actually allows you to have this conversation with yourself. Um, and, and again, it can develop those confidence skills uh, within the students to just express themselves in a different way. So I'm going to go back to studio now. Um, and the very simple thing that I need to do is actually start this podcast. Big red button at the top, nice and simple way to get started. Tap the record button. And obviously, this is where you would use uh, potentially a second iPad as that teleprompter or, you know, have that written down somewhere to support those students. But all we need to do is just record ourselves into this. Welcome to today's podcast. We will be looking at all things getting started with podcasting. Please welcome my guest, Scott Han, on the session with us today. He'll be talking about his experience of using podcasting in his classroom. So let's get going. So that might be my first bit of recording. If I tap on the bars here, I can now separate this down and I can see that first piece of recording. You'll see that it's gone past that eight count, only slightly, but it does allow me to just have that continuous recording. And I have that one first section of my garage band recorded. So I'm going to pause for a second now because I want people to have a go at this. Don't worry too much about what you record. Have a go at just doing an introduction to your podcast. You can call your podcast whatever you want and you can have any sort of special guest with you. Um, and I'll just be quiet for a second. Otherwise, you just end up recording me as well. Cześć wszystkim. Dzisiaj jestem na szkoleniu. 
zobaczymy, co z tego wyniknie. Fab, if you just want to give me a thumbs up or a, a yes in the chat window to say that you're done, we'll uh, we'll move on to the next part. Fab. I know it's always the worrying thing. This is the great thing about doing this in it remotely is if you when you do this in a room, um, adults tend to all get a little bit shy about recording their voices in front of each other. You don't tend to get it with, with children, do you, Scott? Scott, um, I think you'll agree, children are quite happy to, to talk out loud and, and have their, their voices heard, but teachers tend to all go silent all of a sudden. So Yeah, especially younger children, Matt. They will talk in front of anyone. The older they get, the, the shyer they seem to become eventually. Absolutely. So um, I've got my first recording here. Um, I can move the bar to the end. I, I kind of stopped recording for a little bit, so I can set my bar to this point here. Um, and if I want to record the next line of this, and this is really important, you could just record the whole thing in one. Um, but actually, like anything, if you do it in segments, it's easier to break up. It's easier to, to correct if you make a mistake. Um, there's, there's nothing worse than trying to record everything and you, and you might end up with like a three minute clip. And then just as you're about to finish, someone opens the door and shouts and you think, oh, now I've got to do the whole thing again. It's not quite as bad as, as writing a whole essay and having it deleted, but it's the same kind of feeling. So actually, we're just going to add a new line. So the plus at the bottom here allows me to add a different thing. Now, if I was recording music, it might be a different, you know, different instrument that I add in. But actually here, I'm just going to record another voice recording. My bar, as you can see at the top here, is going to record from the part where I ended. And that's just going to help me just organize things on my screen. And then this might be uh, where I, I ask the questions. This could be where I have another presenter. So in, in Scott's example, it, it's the students kind of taking different roles. Um, but I'm just going to just carry on building this and you can you can play around with this to, to your heart's content. And, and really, this is just showing that building stage. So I'm going to start recording again using podcasting in his classroom. So let's get going. Okay, so in today's session, we're going to be looking at how we can add in some interesting features to our podcast. One of them is the ability to add in some interesting voices so that you don't have to sound like you and people might be more engaged with your voice. So I'm going to stop that there. Welcome. Oops, let it go back. This bar here, so you see the kind of like stacked um, icons. This again, is always going to take me back to that recording. You see I've got recording part number one, recording part number two, and it's going to continuously allow me to keep recording over the top of that. Now, like I said, um, we can continue to record that and you can, you can, again, I'm going to give you some time in a second to do that. I'm going to record one final line and it's going to be my guest presenter. So I'm going to go to the new line here. Um, I'm going to just double check that my recording bar, so this line, so that the trim line that you would have if you were making movies, etc. I just need to make sure that this is at the end. Otherwise, I'll just end up talking over myself and it just becomes an editing issue. So if I just place it at the end there, just a quick tip, just helps you do that. Um, but this time, I'm going to record a different voice. So I'm going to go to fun. And I will choose... I'll choose the monster for this one. And again, you can change the kind of settings for this. You can play around with how, how you sound as you do this. And you can change these afterwards as well. And again, I'm just going to go to record and then I'm just going to introduce myself. More engaged with your voice. Yes, that's a critical point because sometimes you can sound really boring and everyone wants to listen to me. So I'll just stop that there. And if I just play this one section back, if I go into uh, that recording again. So there you can see you can kind of have that play around with the, the sound of the voice on the screen. And again, that's that's a useful thing for some learners in the classroom. One, it's playful, but two, some people would still get that uh, confidence issue of talking and hearing their own voice back. We never think we sound the way we actually do when we hear ourselves back. Um, and so if that is a barrier for some students, it's great to have that tool to have them play with something in a slightly different way. So again, I'm going to go quiet, let you just have a play around with, with some of those features um, and just record your voice again, doesn't matter what you say really, 
um, but just record your voice using some of those different um, different modes within the voice recording. Okay, fab. So as you're just playing around with that, just one thing to highlight, if, if I've recorded it there with the monster, if I double tap on the monster, that same recording, I can quickly change to any of the different settings. So you don't, you're not stuck with it. You don't have to re-record it. If you want to change any of those settings, you can easily do that. Um, and then if I just play that section back again, just make sure I go back to that uh, section, just drag that timeline across. You'll see that over on the left-hand side, I now have the sci-fi section. And if I play that same recording, then that's changed that to the sci-fi recording. Now, one thing to highlight here, uh, there are additional settings. See, there's a, a draw kind of um, panel here. If I drag this across, this gives you additional settings. So you can change the volume of, of um, each individual section on this. And actually, you can go even further by changing all sorts of settings in terms of the effects, et cetera, on this. Um, but that's probably a session for more advanced use of GarageBand rather than just getting started with, with podcasting, but useful to just know that that's there. Okay, I'm gonna change mine uh, back and I'm gonna put it back to my monster. And again, that's just how easy it is to just play around with those things and try them out. Fab, okay, hopefully everyone's still with me now. I've got a couple of issues here with my with my podcast. One, it's just my voice. So I'm going to think like, what else can I add in here to just to just spice this up a little bit? And I've got some pauses, some kind of natural pauses between this, um, where I've kind of recorded over, but I haven't started speaking straight away. And actually, when you listen to things like podcasts um, or, or even TV shows, etc., there'll be sound, there'll be some sort of music in the background that kind of just helps that. Again, it takes away the fear for certain learners as well, that it's not just their voice because there's music in the background. And if you've played with clips or iMovie, you'll know the added value of having music in the background can, can add to the effect. So I'm going to tap up here on this loop, um, and this is Apple's loops. And within this, there are loads of loops that you can choose from that can just add to this. Now, I've downloaded a couple of extra packs. Um, so you can see here you can, can get more Apple loops. I'll show that in a second. Um, and some of these are, are atmospheric things, sound effects, um, all sorts of things that you can add in. You can change all of this at the moment. Mine's, mine is looking specifically at sound effects. So for, for children, if they wanted to have a round of applause happening um, after they've introduced someone, they could find that in there and start to really play around with this. And this is where the creative aspect comes in. Um, you know, it could be a jingle. It could be something that, that just adds to what you're doing. Um, if I jump in again, just quickly pop in here. Um, I'm going to have, no, I don't want an angry trombone or an aeroplane. There we go. I quite like that one. That's kind of like this interim music. And all I need to do is just kind of add this in where I want it to go. And then I can edit this. Now, this is creating this, this whole line for me. So I'm just going to drag this bar all the way across so it becomes the length I want this to be. Oops, there we go. And then just kind of line this up. This is just a, a trial and error, really, as you're playing around. Now, if I put my bar back to here, I can play that sound. Let's get going. OK, so in today's session, we're... So you see how easy it is to kind of just make these kind of musical sections um, or, or the sound connect those different sections. And I've got no podcasting background at all. I, I'm, I'm not the most musical person in the world but it's quite easy to just play around and listen back. And, and again, not necessarily from a literacy point of view, but definitely from a learning point of view, there's so much in there for students to take responsibility, to play, problem solve, 
critically think about you know what they've created does it sound good is it right um, so there's so many sort of deeper skills that you can play around with so again um, I will stop talking for a second so that you can record some things in there but take just a few moments just play around with some of those loops explore potentially some of the additional loops that are in here so um, where it says get more apple loops takes you into a section within GarageBand these are all free to download they just um, they're not necessarily downloaded at, at source one thing I point out um, for educators, this one here, Toy Box, this one gives you those sound effects that you may well use in your classroom, probably more for primary age students, but things like um, vehicle sounds that you might want to use, there's numbers in there of different languages, etc. Um, really useful to have on your device, including, and we'll look at this in a second, some fantastic space um, sounded ones that are actually um, NASA recordings that you can use royalty free as well. So just take a moment to just explore some of those things and then we'll look at how you can add them into your project as well. Scott, whilst people are playing with that, I don't know, um, have you, have, have your students kind of explored it in this way in terms of, of taking it further and, and adding in their own sounds, adding in, adding in their own kind of musical backgrounds or sound effects? Is that something that they've explored? Yeah, so if you listen to our school podcast, for example, it starts with um, a little bit of a jingle, a, a bit of a theme tune. And uh, what we pulled out from that as well were these little interludes, as you say. So where the podcast is broken up into sections, for example, there might be a section to start with where the children are talking about what they've done in their topic um, that half term. And it may then naturally move into an interview with a member of staff from the school. What we wanted was something in between that so that the, the audience listening appreciate that we've moved from one section to another and we found a nice very short one or two second soundbite that just indicates that we've moved into something new um, and once we settled on it we, we use that now every episode of the podcast so because ours is every half term we've kind of kept that structure so it's got a recognizable theme tune but of course if you're doing it in the classroom the principle's the same, but they can be a bit more creative and they can change it as much as they want. But yeah, definitely, particularly with the older learners. So my sort of like nine, 10, 11 year olds, they are very, very good at listening to something and trying to work out whether that sounds right um, yeah. and, and trying lots of different things until they get it just how they want it. Yeah. And, and like I said, that that is that is a skill in itself, isn't it, in terms of refining and, and reflecting on what you're doing and is it right? And and we certainly want that with our learners in Wales as part of our curriculum. And I know we've got people on here today that aren't in Wales and and welcome. Um, but but that's a key thing, no matter where you are in the world, in terms of having students actually take responsibility and ownership of their learning. Um, I just wanted to draw attention to, to some of these. These are the, the NASA ones I was mentioning before. And this in itself can become part of um, a project that you do in the classroom. So if I just play some of these, um, you, hopefully you'll recognize um, some of these. So there's some really, really nice sounds in here. And then again, these are all free to download, free to use. So if you are doing anything like space themed, um, loads of nice things that you could put in there. So it could be that you're you're creating um, a podcast as a classroom activity. So not necessarily Scott's podcast about the school, but something which is actually just an in the class activity. It could be around science, could be around space, could be around landing on the moon, those sorts of things. You could set this up as a as an activity where you know if you re were reporting on the, the moon landings. Could you create that? And then you've got these real sound effects that you can add into it. And again, just makes that authentic kind of idea for students. 
Okay, I'm going to move on to a, a second thing that you can add into this then. So at the moment, I'm adding in my voice directly and adding in the sounds through the loops. I'm going to jump out of this uh, for a second, go back to my um, instruments panel, which is this one here, and have a look at the, the next thing on here, which is actually under keyboard. And this is where you can use it as a sampler. Um, and this can be quite fun. Again, if you want to make your own jingle, sometimes, um, and it's probably a very 80s thing, and I'm, I'm probably showing my age now in terms of, of the approach to things, but sometimes when you listen to radio stations, you'll have the voices come in and they'll say silly things, etc. cetera. Um, and to do that, you can use this, this sampler um, idea. So I'm gonna jump into sampler, and you'll see that I've got a keyboard down here, I've got a big red button, um, and fundamentally, this is just how I'm going to record things. You can change um, this, the settings and your, your samples up here, but fundamentally, all I'm going to do is record my voice. Welcome. So this is my sample. And now if I play on the keyboard. Now, again, you probably can see how I'm showing my age here, because I'm thinking back to like radio stations where that would be how they'd introduce themselves um, but it, again it's a little bit of fun a little bit of a different way to play around with the voice you can do lots with this you can you can break up this um, whole thing and again if, if we had um, like an advanced garage band session and, and someone who knows a lot more about making music than me they'd show you how you can change all of the, the sounds change the clip the speed etc but just as a basic thing you could just record this as as part of your your music, uh, part of your podcast. Sorry. So again, I'm just going to tap on record, and I'm just going to make this up as I go along, using podcasting in his classroom. So well, let's get going. Well, 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 okay. So into so I've recorded that clip. You can see that clip is there in green. Now I didn't do what I told you to do before, and I've recorded it over sound before, but that's not such a major issue because I actually have it as a second or as a separate clip here that I can just move along and have this where I want. So I'm just going to move my clips just so this makes more sense on the screen. Let's make sure it goes all the way back to start. And again, this is just you know a little bit of, I suppose, computational thinking going on as well in terms of students thinking about order um, and structure. There could be loops in what they're doing. You know, this, there's so many ways that you can bring in other areas of the curriculum into this but I'm just gonna play around and just play with some, some of those elements of design. And this is where I said before about if you record in sections, it's a lot easier to do these kind of fine touches to just make sure it, it all makes sense. Now, if I just play that start again, as embarrassing as it is. Yeah, it's welcome. terrible, but you get the idea of, of how you can use that sampler idea to then add in some additional things. So again, I'm just gonna pause uh, my voice for a second, give you a chance to just sample something. You can sample your own voice. You could tap on a table, you could bang on a window, uh, you could do all sorts of things. Just sample that and then play around with the keyboard how you can change the pitch um, and tone of those things. And again, if you've got any questions at all, feel free, chuck them into the window. I see Scott's added in some, some, um, some links, uh, which are great. And his, pod, his school's podcast on there, which is, which is really cool. So you can see you know, the work of students. I think that speaks for itself when you see that the work that students do. Okay, great. So hopefully you've had a play around. Um, Scott, any any tips, um, considerations from your point of view of doing this in the classroom that you wanted to share with with people on the call today? Yeah, just just a few things, I suppose, that we found from experience. And, and it, this really was a, you know, a, a learning experience for us uh, over the first few tries. But I think one thing to consider is noise level. 
because that's always difficult in a classroom and not every school is built with these nice little spaces that you can you know take children to where it's fairly quiet and you haven't got background noise so um the answer to that is only one that you'll know but think about that beforehand because we found it really difficult in the beginning to find those spaces because actually you know if you're recording on an ipad for example um it picks up quite a lot of background noise it's a very good microphone yeah. so something to think about i think before you get started so that you avoid that frustration in your learners when they're geared up and ready to start recording they just want to talk they don't want to have to then think about you know the fact that it's too noisy or there's a door slamming as you say matt or there's children outside um the other thing is people often ask me about the kit that's involved now what you've done there matt is obviously recorded into garage band and we mm -hmm. we can't see your setup but i don't know if you're using a microphone or if this is just you know you speaking straight into your device um the the beauty with garage band is you can pick up an ipad and you can just talk into it what we found though was purchasing a microphone a usb microphone has such an amazing impact on um the, the level of i want to call it professionalism the level of professionalism that the children show because there's a microphone in front of them it's a little bit like a prop but actually it does genuinely have a real impact on on how they perform and it it somehow takes on a new life then because they've got this microphone it's really important um and and it's a great tool without having to spend a huge amount of money money being an issue you could just talk straight into the ipad but actually that microphone made a huge difference um Sophie's just said in the chat, is there a brand or a model I recommend? Um, I will get a link for the one that I've bought. I will add, though, that I bought quite an expensive one because um, I quite like the idea of having an expensive toy. You don't have to buy one as expensive as I bought, but I will absolutely share that in just a second. Um, and my last consideration, Matt, was just around um, safeguarding. We obviously publish our podcast to a global audience so we're very careful not to name children not to name the school um you know which which is their instinct is to say hi my name is scott and i'm from blenheim road primary school we've had to sort of train them not to do that and they're very sensible and they understand why um not so much of a problem if you're not sharing it globally if it's just shared within your school or just within your class it's obviously not so much of an issue, but again, something just to consider um, to, you know, to keep our children safe, I suppose. Um, I'll come back at the end, if that's all right, Matt, I'll, I'll let you finish this section first, but I just wanted to share at the end then some ideas of how we've integrated it into our curriculum in terms of, you know, where we've used it. Absolutely. Yeah, that'd be great. And, and just to your point around the, the uh, students not naming themselves, I think what great, what great real life learning opportunity to teach them why that's important because we can do that theoretically in class and say you know we shouldn't really share our data online and we can do that as a very closed activity but when you do it linked to something that is actually going out there they see the reasons why because they know it's going to go global and they know that people are going to listen to it anywhere so again real life learning opportunities i think is great so thanks for that scott really helpful um, OK, so th th there's the basics of how to put a podcast together. Now we're going to have a look um, at just some of the other things that you can do within GarageBand whilst we're here. If you've never used GarageBand before, just some things that can can kind of help you get started and, and really get you interested in in making music, even if you have never thought you were. Like I said, within all of the, the track section, you can play all of these different instruments. Um, there's some fab things in here that you can play around with. Um, if you download the Everyone Can Create um, music guide, they will teach you how to do all of these things. There's a fantastic um, 1564 activity that you can do, which will basically show that you can play music. Um, I'm not musical, but I'm going to quickly show you some music now, um, very, very quickly. Um, I just need to, in fact, I'm going to start a new project on this one so it doesn't interfere with the sound behind. But again, just to show you how easy this is to get your students interested in playing music. The only chords I need is the C, the G, the A, M and the F. And I'm going to do the timing across the top in line with the numbers. 
And again, you can think about this in terms of students counting times tables. It's, I've seen so many fantastic examples of how people have done this. Um, but I'm just going to play this one through now. So that's the, the routine I'm going to play. If I just tap on record for this. So there we go, not musical at all, but so easy for you to just think about the concepts. This is taken directly from the Everyone Can Create Guide. So if you've, if you've not seen these, grab hold of these um, from, from Apple on the bookstore, um, and it will teach you how to do simple things like this, simple activities to get music in the classroom. And you can, you can do all sorts of, of creative activities with this. The next thing I just wanted to show you before we just move on to where to go next with your podcasting, um, is this live loop section. Now live loops is where you can create jingles. Um, I did a podcast with some friends of mine um, a few years ago um, and my job was to come up with a jingle each time uh, which was always the joke because I'm not musically talented at all um, and so I would be tasked with coming up with a jingle and, and the secret to my success or not success was actually this is where I made my jingles. So if I jump on any of these um, this is great again for children to play around with sound etc this is just a soundboard you've got all of these samples of music collected these are these are the same as the loops that you find over here um just sectioned off different elements but they're created around a theme so this one being chill for example and now if i just tap any one of these it will play that sound So you'll see that you can just you can just experiment with the different sounds and see how it sounds. It, it's completely unique to the things that you want to create. And then again, if you wanted to record that, you just tap record, record that as a sound, and then you can add this in. This might be your jingle. This might be the outro music. It might be something you use in between. Um, or equally, this could just be a whole lesson in itself. So hopefully that's something to just kind of demonstrate to you the expanse of stuff that GarageBand offers you to do. Now, if I jump back into my um, my recording, which this is why you should name them, right? Like which one was my recording? I think it was this one. Yes, here we go. I thought I'd lost it all. So this is my podcast. This is, oh, it's not complete, obviously. But what do I do with it now? So we've done the recording. We've created something. And again, Scott, I'll probably ask you to jump in and, and talk about your experience of doing this. If I go on to my song here, um, I'm going to, oops. I'm going to tap on that so that I get the additional options. The first thing I should always say is you should rename this. So I'll just call it podcast, just so I know what it's called. Um, putting a date on it, all those sorts of things might be very useful. If I then tap and hold again, I have this option to share this out. So I'm going to tap on share and I'm going to export this as a song. Although it's a podcast, it just it comes up as the song. You can export it as a project if you want to share this with other students to carry on building on things, um, but I'm going to share it as a song. Lots of settings in here of, of how you can change it. I tend to just leave it on high quality, um, just for size examples, and then tap share. And it's going to give me a set of places to save this. Now, if you were, were creating this and you wanted to share this with your teacher because it was in an in-class activity, you could share it to any one of those platforms that you might be using from Google, Shobi to, to Classroom, etc. Um, I'm just going to actually go to open in. It's going to export that as a song, obviously, depending on the, the length of song you've put into it, the, the amount of detail you put into it, this can this can take um, a little bit longer uh, for some more than others. But hopefully this will just quickly go through. And I'm going to save this to my files. So I'm saving it on the device in files. Again, you might have you might be using Google, you might be using OneDrive. I'm just going to save it um, onto my device, though, because I know I'll be able to find it later, or I hope I'll be able to find it later. So I'm going to tap Save. And then for me, and again, this is just my tip. This, this isn't the only way to do it. This is just the way I've done them in the past. I'm going to use this app here called Anchor. An anchor when you when you sign up to it, and again, maybe you have a school account, maybe you have a, a class account, etc. Just allows me um, to add this in. Now you can record your podcast directly in Anchor, 
but you can also find things that you've created in your library. So if I tap on library um, and go to import, I can now find that, that one that I just created. He says, this is the hopeful moment where he thinks, where did I put it? It's on my iPad. Should it be called podcast? There we go. So I can tap on this and that's gonna now add this uh, podcast into my library. Uh, and at that point, I can just simply drag this across and start to build that as a podcast. Scott, do you want to jump in here? Because I think you use Anchor as well, don't you, for, for creating yours. You might not do it in the same way here, but but what, what have you found about Anchor as a, as a platform to just support you in, in presenting your work to the students, uh, not to the students, to the, to the wider audience? So you're absolutely right. I use Anchor actually twofold. Um, I, I use it for the school podcast. I also use it for my own podcast, and um, I personally would recommend it to anyone. So exactly as you've shown there, Matt, I would record it in GarageBand, export it as a song, as an MP, uh, M4A, and then import it into the library. The, the reason I use Anchor and what I really like about it is once you've shared it to Anchor, Anchor will share it to all the podcasting platforms that you'd expect. So they are very closely linked by, to Spotify. So within minutes of uploading something to Anchor and publishing, it's available on Spotify. Um, they also support Apple Podcasts, although that sometimes takes a little bit longer <laughs> for them to appear on Apple, but, but it will get there. Um, and the one thing I would say to you is if you are getting ready to publish a podcast, just be wary that the first one you publish does take a little bit longer to be accepted by all the platforms. So I would say if you've got some launch in mind and you want to you know, publish a podcast at a certain point, put a really short trailer out there about a month before you're expecting to launch. And then you've got roughly four weeks for all the different podcast platforms to accept you. Go through all the checks that Anchor does on your behalf. And then when you're ready to launch your first episode, you can go straight in and it will it will automatically distribute it straight away. That, again, Matt, is something that we found the hard way. So a big piece of advice, I would say. Yeah, which is why it's always good to have someone who's been through it to, to share that with other people. So thanks. That's that's really useful, Scott. So um, I'm just going to kind of wrap things up then in terms of what we've done today, just to recap. So we've looked at the, the tools that are available to you within GarageBand and, and how to get started with that. We, we talked about pages as a teleprompter to just maybe support students in, in how they're pacing themselves. Um, adding in those Apple loops, so the loop that's at the top of the screen, um, but then going further maybe with the audio sampler. How to edit your work, so the tip was record in sections because then it's easy for you to play around with those things and, and separate it easier to add in those additional kind of sound clips if you want to have them. Um, we've looked at the other things that are in GarageBand and, and like Scott, Scott will testify to, if you, if you give this to students, they'll come up with all sorts of crazy things. They'll come up with their own jingles created in live loops. They'll use the instruments to play things. And again, just thinking about this is, is not a music app. It doesn't just have to be used in your music curriculum. It, it's a great for, for English. It's great for maths. There's some great things in there that you can do around times tables and, and all sorts of things. So, so don't see it as a music tool, see it as a curriculum tool. Um, and we talked about sharing. So how to export your song or your podcast as a song. And then potentially, if you want to share it to the world, um, Anchor as a tool to do that. Scott, did you have any last few um, things that you wanted to talk about in terms of curriculum? Yeah, I just wanted to share some ideas, I suppose, for where you might integrate this. Because as Matt said there, it's it's really not a music tool. That That is such a, a key piece here. It's a creative tool. So I'll give you some examples that might help in terms of where we've used it or where we are planning to use it. Um, and it'll just show you the variety of different ways that you could use podcasting or use GarageBand. So um, we've looked, as well as doing a school podcast, we've looked at having a podcast as um, sort of like a piece of end of topic summary slash reflection. I really like my learners at the end of a topic to recap what they've learned, what they know, what skills maybe they've developed or what experiences they've had. And I think podcasting is perfect for that. Um, if I said to them, I want you to write everything you know about, let's say, space, if space is my topic, you know, particularly with certain learners, they will absolutely shut down because the thought of writing everything they know is just too daunting. Whereas if we ask them to talk about it, actually, 
that's probably a lot more accessible. But it does the same job, doesn't it? They still get to reflect on what they've learned. They might even share things they'd really like to go away and learn more about that you haven't covered. That's, you know, that's for me is, is a really key one. But aside from that, we've got ideas such as a book review. So if you're really encouraging your learners to read uh, for pleasure, why not get them to record a book review at the end of that book? discuss maybe what happens in the story, what they enjoyed about it. Maybe they've done a piece of research about the author. Again, you know, it's alternatives to writing and podcasting is something that I think they will embrace a lot more than if we asked them to write about, uh, you know, a book review. Um, another one, Matt, is around having a debate, which um, certainly I've tried with my class. So get them into pairs, give them an iPad, one person will be on one side of the debate and the other, you know, debating against them. If you just pass the iPad back and forth recording their debate, what they can go and do afterwards is obviously edit that into a podcast. They can insert some sound clips. They can do a, a bit of an introduction. But having that sort of debate in the moment without scripting it is quite interesting. It's quite powerful. And they can obviously go and edit it to, make, to clean it up a little bit and make it sound good. Um, and the last idea we we will be trying, I think you've already alluded to Matt, is, is having our learners reporting as if they're on location somewhere. So, you know, if, if we're studying, um, I don't know, let, let's stick with space. If we're looking at um, a launch of a, of a rocket, they can be reporters at the launch, basically reporting on what's happening, but they can use a lot of the sound effects that GarageBand offers. They could have, um, very creative ways of making their own sound effects as well as Matt's already said you know don't underestimate their ability to be creative because they will blow you away with the things they can come up with but they're just some ideas that I wanted to share that you know might give you a little bit of a start of a 10 to thinking about how could I actually use this in my classroom if I don't want to produce a school podcast right now what you can do in the classroom is you know arguably more powerful than anything else so um hopefully that's just giving you some ideas to go with really good tips thanks for that um really really good um I, I've, I've added this book into the chat window if you haven't downloaded it this is the everyone can create music I've, I've gone to the section in the book which talks about podcasting specifically um so it goes over lots of things that we've talked about in this session here um, and ideas for, for activities that you can do. So if you haven't seen the Everyone Can Create resources from, from Apple, uh, there's one for music, one for drawing, one for video and one for pictures. Um, but they're a great way to just kind of dive in and, and use these with the students so they can self learn how to do these things. But it does talk about kind of taking it further and what you can do. And then, you know, just as some examples of some of those things. Um, the next thing to just kind of summarize things, and, and it's been great hearing Scott's examples of this, is, is really it's have a go yourself um, and that's probably where the, the garage band test bit comes in and the link to the um, to the Apple teacher book that I put in earlier is is you've got to have a go you've, you've got to be confident enough to do it and yes the children probably are going to be better than you at doing things but they'll appreciate the fact that you're trying these as well so so definitely have a go um, if you haven't gone into Apple teacher yet if you're if you're new to these sessions and you haven't seen this again I'll paste that into the chat window so jump into Apple teacher um, lots of the stuff that we talked about today um, will be in the GarageBand section. You'll be able to earn your badge for GarageBand. And then, you know, please do use that journal if you haven't downloaded it already and think about what you've learned in your own classroom and how you can apply that. And, and as always, we'd love to hear the things that you're doing. So if you are on Twitter, please do share those things with Apple Teacher, um, Apple RTC, and then us as South Wales RTC. And even just to share some of those ideas for, for, for what you're taking away from today's session would be lovely to hear from you as well. Um, the final thing to just add, and I'm going to add this again into the chat window, is in this kind of fantastic world of everything being online, um, you don't have to just come to our sessions. And as I've said before, we've got people here from, from America on our call, which is, which is fantastic. Um, I've added in a link in the window to additional RTC sessions. You can jump onto there. Um, and if there's a, a session taking place um, in another part of the country, 
um, you're still going to be welcome to join in those those sessions as well. So, you know, you might have missed one of the sessions that we've done earlier. Jump onto there. You'll be able to join in live to someone else's session. Um, it's five o'clock. I don't want to keep people for any longer um, than you've already given up. Um, thanks so much for joining in this evening. This is going to be recorded as well. So if you feel that this is useful for a colleague, um, I'll be putting this onto the YouTube channel um, and feel free to jump on and share this with your colleagues. But thank you very much and happy podcasting. And a big thank you to Scott for joining in with us tonight as well. Thank you, Matt. Thank you, everyone.